Now, a short introduction for Bante. Bante Dr. Dhammapala was born in Kuching in 1970 and ordained in 1994 in Kedah under Chao Prarach Amaratara, then the chief Siamese Sangha Nayaka in Malaysia. He then studied under Bante Dhammasakaro Mahatero. Bante later sent, spent 15 years studying Buddhist philosophy, Bali and Sanskrit literatures in Sri Lanka and Hong Kong. He obtained his Bachelor of Arts and Master in Philosophy from the renowned University of Kelaniya. In 2009, he obtained his Doctorate of Philosophy in Buddhist Studies under the supervision of Professor Venerable K.L. Damajoti in the University of Hong Kong. From 2010 to 13, he was the visiting professor of the Center of Buddhist Studies at the University of Hong Kong. Pante has traveled frequently conducting meditation retreats Dharma Talks and Teaching in Malaysia, Hong Kong, Taiwan, and Singapore. Bhante is the founder and spiritual advisor of the Brahma Vihara Monastery and Retreat Center based in Malacca. So today, Bhante will be sharing with us on the topic, Chinese superstitious beliefs from a Buddhist perspective. Bhante, uh, can you deliver the Dharma Talk? Thank you. <coughs> Okay, so before we start, so let us now recite Namatasa three times, followed by True Refuge and Panchasila. So, Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sang Buddhasa. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sang Buddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sang Buddhasa Buddhang Saranang Gachami Dhammang Saranang Gachami Sangang Saranang Gachami Dotiyam Pi Buddhang Saranang Gachami Dotiyam Pi Dhammang Saranang Gachami Dotiyam Pi Sangang Saranang Gachami Dotiyam Pi Buddhang Saranang Gachami Tatiyam pidamang saranang gachami Tatiyam pisangang saranang gachami Panchasila Panati pata Veramani sikha padang samadhyami Adinna dana Veramani sikha padang samadhyami Kame sumin cha chara Veramani sikha padang samadhyami Mosavada Veramani sikha padang samadhyami Surameraman Chapamadatana Veramani Sikha Padang Samadhyami 
ഇമാനി പാഞ്ച സിക്കാപദാനി സമാദിയാമി ഇമാനി പാഞ്ച സിക്കാപദാനി സമാദിയാമി ഇമാനി പാഞ്ച സിക്കാപദാനി സമാദിയാമി ഇടം മേ പോങ്ങ ആസവാക്കയാവാഹ ഓ ഇടം മേ ശീല നിബാനസ പച്ചയോ ബുദ്ധാനുസതി കണ്ടംപ്ലേഷൻ ഓഫ് ദ ബുദ്ധ ഇതി പിസോവ ഭഗവ അർഹം സാമ anotaro purisadam sarati satta deva manosanam buddha bhagavati dhamma nusati contemplation of the dhamma ഭഗവതമോ സാന്തികോ അകാലികോ ഏനായികോ പാചാത്തോ വേങ്ങോഹി sanghanusati contemplation of the sangha supati panno bhagavato savak sangho ujupati panno bhagavato savak sangho nyaya pati panno bhagavato savak sangho sami chi pati panno bhagavato savak sangho yadidang chattari purisa yogani at purisa pogala es bhagavato savak sangho ahoneyo pahoneyo dakineyo anjali karaniyo anotara punya keta loka sati sadu 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 namo buddhaya when we talk about uh, chinese uh, superstitious belief we have to talk about the chinese folk religion and what is chinese folk religion some people describe the chinese folk religion as an empty bowl which can be variously filled with the teaching and practice of buddhism taoism confucianism and the chinese syncretic religions and this include the veneration of forces of nature and ancestors exorcism of demonic forces 
and a belief in spirits and gods. So since uh, in ancient times in China, these Chinese practices had been mixed with Buddhist ideas of karma and rebirth and the Taoist teachings about the hierarchies of gods to form the popular religion Chinese believed, which has lasted in many ways until the present day. Uh, we shall look at the following topics related to Chinese belief. And most of the Chinese belief centered around the belief of life after death. And our Chinese belief system has been mixed with various Chinese and Buddhist belief until we hardly distinguished the original intention of the teaching. So it is crucial for us to understand this Chinese belief and how the Theravada Buddhists respond to it. And these are interesting topics related to Chinese belief of life after death. Chinese generally believed once we die, we will be reborn as ghosts. And Chinese consider the soul as ghosts. So there is a belief of saving this soul from the hell. So Chinese mix up you know, the ghost and the hell in the first place. So since we are talking about the ghost, then we should know what is the ghost means in Buddhism. So Chinese believe that when we die, our soul will become the ghost. So Chinese will offer the food to ghost and in return, asking for, pro asking for protection from the ghost. So another topic is, is that in our human world, we often hear that people are possessed by spirits or non-humans. And what are these spirits? What are these non-human? Say like once, if we possess by it, then how should we get rid of it? And Chinese also believed in the pantheons of guardian deities. And we also find it very interesting you know, to know these deities, I mean, some of the common deities that are known to us. Um, a general understanding of these guardian deities in Buddhism in, is also very important. Huh? So that in our practice or spiritual path, we don't get mixed up with the Chinese belief and not depending on them for our cultivation of spiritual path. Traditional Chinese belief uh, believed uh, that the people will become ghosts after death, right? Lang si liao ha, bian gui ha. So therefore, when someone dies, there is a ceremony to save the soul of the death from the hell. When I was young, I often heard, uh, you know, from the old people, you know, saying that, you know, people will become ghosts after death. So we have to invite the Taoist masters to come to the death ceremony to conduct the hell breaking ceremony so that the soul of the dead person can be taken to the heaven. It seems that the heaven is the ultimate place for Chinese. So I don't seem to understand all of this at all. So I have a lot of fears when I saw this and questions keep arising. Why should I become ghost after death? And because of this, I turned to Buddhism for an answer. So Buddhism opened my eyes, you know, to see the reality of the world, particularly the cause and effect and the karma. And therefore the fear towards death has gradually disappeared. When I was young, I was asked by many people why I become a monk. And my answer is very simple because I fear death. Still, many tra traditional Buddhists are believing that one will become ghost after death. And they don't seem to find secure and safe if they die. So he does not seem to have confidence yet if his relative performs the Theravada ways of funeral. And they ask their relative instead to perform the Taoist way of funeral. Because for them, Taoist way has meaning because full of mystics and very ceremonial. 
And the things in this way, um, you know, can take the soul, you know, from the hell to the heaven. So this is one of the reasons why people said we Buddhists are still very superstitious. <clears throat> um, of course, you know, Chinese believe a dead soul will reborn as ghost and will hang around, you see, um, you know, to seek rebirth. So um, the times for their hanging around, you know, is said to be uh, 49 days, yeah, 7, 7, 45 days. So the morning, uh, you know, morning, you know, ceremony will be performed once a week, which lasted for seven weeks. It means 7, 7, 49 days. So even though the funeral ceremony ends after 49 days, the ceremony continue, you know, for the family for 100 more days. So Chinese people are very clever and very creative and money-minded people. The Chinese created the hell bank note. Yeah? I believe also they got a hell credit card as well. So during their stay in the, in the hell, their ancestor can use the hell bank note in the bank, right? To purchase thing, I believe. So in the ancestors felt bored and their living relative also burned the mahjong. Uh, mahjong, you see? So the ancestors can play the mahjong over there with their friends. Isn't it funny and ridiculous? So exactly, you know, to Buddhists, these are very superstitious beliefs. And then for the fear towards death, that's gradually disappear. When I was young, I was asked by many people, why I become a monk? And my answer is very simple because... Hmm. Auntie, something wrong with your sound. Is it? How are? Now okay, now okay. Okay, yeah. So, now you hear me? Now okay. Okay, yeah. So this is a Chinese belief. When we die, we will be reborn as ghosts. So traditional Chinese usually will invite tourist masters to perform the funeral rites to liberate the dead soul from the hell. So the Chinese mix up the soul and the ghost, you see, and Chinese says that the, gold, the, the soul will become the ghost. I think this is quite, uh, has, been that, has been deeply rooted in the Chinese yeah, mind. Like in Hokkien, we say that yeah, So this is so deeply rooted. Yeah? So, of course, Buddhism doesn't deny the reborn as a ghost after death. And the person is not necessarily becoming ghost. So in Buddhism, if a person is reborn as a ghost after death, that is his uh, maturing of unwholesome karmas in the past. So if the departed one has done a lot of bad karma, if they don't repent and change, then when that karma is ripened before death, they will be reborn in hell or animal realms after death. And conversely, uh, if the departed one did many wholesome deeds, karmas in his lifetime, such as generosity, precepts, meditation, etc. When his wholesome karma matures before death, he will be reborn to one of the six heavens or as a human. So therefore, people do not necessarily become ghosts after death, and that is depending on the karma. And of course, it is very interesting to know about ghosts or praetors yeah, in Buddhism too. And in one of the Buddhist texts, Melinda Panha, there are four kinds of predators that describes in the text Melinda Panha. One is a Wantasika, you know, the ghost who feed on vomit. And the second is a Kopi Pasino. It means that the ghosts who are always hungry and thirsty. And the third, uh, <clears throat> Nija Matahika, who are consumed by craving. And the fourth, Paradatu Pajivina, it means that ghosts who live on the gifts of others. And the last one, particularly the Paradatu Pajivina, who live on the gift of others, are able to enjoy the merits transferred to them by the living friends or relatives so that they can pass on you know, to the better abodes of happiness. So if the departed one did unwholesome karma, before death, 
unfortunately, uh, reborn as hungry ghosts or the thirsty ghosts. Then their karmas make them unable to obtain food or eating, no matter how hard they work to obtain it. Even the Buddhas could not help them, let alone his family. So however, in the case of ones who reborn as the fourth types of ghosts, like Paradatu, Pajivika Petas, it means that the ghosts who live on the gift of others, he is the luckiest of all the gods because only these types of gods can enjoy the sacrifice food offered by their relative. Um, we also now look at some other aspect of gods mentioned in the Buddhist literature. Just like human, these gods live our live in our human space, yeah, and they belong to one of the woeful plane of existence, along with animal realms, hell, and asuras realms. Yeah, it means a four. Ghosts are also beings. You see, with five aggregates like us. Of course, their bodies are much more subtle than the human, and they are not visible yeah, to the naked eyes. But since they have these uh, five, five aggregates, you know, they have certain sense faculty as well, like feeling, <clears throat> consciousness, and they are heirs, of course, to their past karmas, you know, and good karmas. So um, girls are also divided into, you know, those, uh, what we call the blessed ghost, huh? <laughs> or good ghosts, huh? homia, kuya, and miserable ghosts. And, they are born of their respective karma, and some blessed gods have certain power and abilities that come inherently when they are born. Uh, just like bird, you know, they have, they can fly, you see, naturally in the skies. That is, that is their ability. Or the fish can swim, you know, in the water. That is also the, the fish ability. Or uh, the celestial beings, you know, devas, you know, live in the heaven. They also have the ability to know their past life. So these are the ability. So the ghost um, also has certain abilities, you see. And, and this ghost, you see, they can change their body shape. Yeah, they can change their shape. And they can move really, you know, they can fly. They know the people's mind, yeah. And they can attach to someone's body and become sort of like a medium, yeah? And the retribution of ghosts, you see, the fruition, you see, the results of the ghosts are also very different, especially, especially those uh, who have no merit or, uh, or those miserable ghosts, they are called hungry ghosts or the praetors, you know, in the Pali suttas. And they are often, you know, suffer from the hunger, thirst, and other diseases. And they can enjoy the food or sacrifice offered by their friends and relatives. And for most of the gods, they are just like us. They go around, you know, looking for food. Huh? And their food is also very diverse. It says that, you know, some live in the cesspit and they eat the feces. And some eat, you know, the people's, you know, the sputum. And some eat blood in the delivery room. And some eat garbage, some eat smell or smoke, or some eat food that people throw away after offering, you know, to their ancestors, etc. And of course, uh, there is an exception, particularly for those uh, blessed gods. Yeah, blessed gods. Yeah, they are worshipped by the people. Uh, what blessed gods need to do, you know, is to wait for their believers, you know, to come and offer food or sacrifice to them. So they are considered as a blessed ghost. And of course, ghosts are born in two forms, uh, born of womb, right? Or born of the spontaneous birth. And we have said they are invisible to the naked eyes. <clears throat> uh, they are like a praetors or the devas, yeah? And it's interesting because the, the ghosts also divided into two gender, right? Male and female. And they also have their families and they can give birth, you know, to the God's children. But they do not 
have their own world, uh, like the animal world. So these ghosts, you know, they live with us, you know, in our surrounding. And of course, they have been always with, around, around with us. And, you know, they also live in the forest, you know, the swamps, uh, cemeteries, and etc., etc. <clears throat> the appearance of these ghosts are also hugely different. Some are good looking, uh, and some are ugly, some are blessed, and some are not, you know, just like human beings. And some ghosts, they look quite similar to human beings. And they also understand that though they are deaf, but they don't know what they do, you see? And so they surround themselves, you know, in the family places, watching hopelessly, you know, at every move of their, of their relative, of their friends or strangers or passerby, etc. So other than finding food and roaming for shelter, they cannot know how long their lifespan is. So however, these kinds of ghosts, particularly ghosts who live on the gift of others, may continue to wander around, you know, their lovely, their, what do you call, nostalgic families or relatives and friends. Sometimes uh, they will show the appearance to others or to make some unusual strange phenomenal and noises. And this is what, you know, most people call a haunted, no? And of course, the first thought that most people have is scared and wanted to drive the ghost away. And this type of ghost actually hopes to make other notice of their existence and also hope to give some food and merit to get, you see, they hope to get. So usually people will invite, you know, the tourist masters to, you know, to, to perform certain rites and rituals, you know, to exorcise gods, or to ask Buddhist monks to recite some suttas or protective verses. But sometimes it turns out to be chasing them out, making them homeless and becoming wandering gods. And in Buddhism, there is a term called amanusa, yeah, like manusia, you know, Malay word. Amanusa means that they are non-human beings. Uh, and this was referred to many kinds of being, you see. And beside gods, uh, you know, blessed gods, miserable gods, they also include Yaka, Ashura, or Gandaba, or Naga. Of course, we don't have time, you know, to go through these, these other types of non being because we focus on, you know, on the, the, the blessed gods, yeah. So very often you will hear also another word, you see, to call them guardian deities, yeah or Dharma protectors. So Chinese has a pantheon of deities, and they're in fact referring to these non-human beings, such as blessed gods, yaka, you know, ashuras, you know, or gandabas. So in Chinese, you find everywhere, every corner, you know, the Chinese stokong, you know, that have a certain rituals to invite ghosts or non-human beings to take control of one's body, hoping to get the help, you know, from their psychic power to help themselves, you know, and others, you know, to achieve one's own personal, um, you know, goal or gains, yeah? Yes, uh, you know, different types of blessed gods or yaka, you know, ashuras, gandabas, or other pantheons of deities will also be invited for different purposes to name a few, you know, popular ones, huh? uh, you know, Chinese who are sick usually will ask the Hua Tuo, you know, uh, it means a Chinese physician for helps, huh? for helps. And of course, those who want to improve their marriage life, and they will look at the God of harmony and union, He huh? He mm. Yeah, uh, this one is quite common. Huh? And of course, those who want to exorcise evil or to free a person from spirits, they will look for Quan Ti huh? or Master Liu Ren. Huh? And also, you look at another one, it's interesting because we have another one, it's called Hei Bai Wu Chang. Huh? These are the two gods of wealth, yeah, that they bring wealth from the netherworld. And they got two brothers. The big brother, we call it uh, Dua, 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 Dua Ya Pek. Uh, it means that they, 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 they worn in white robes. Huh? And the second brothers uh, in the black robes, they call Yabek. Uh, so this is also quite 
common uh, to Chinese are Tua Pei, Ia Pei. Huh? And Chinese often pray, you know, in front of their statues and seek for these four numbers or the lottery numbers. But I don't know how many of them really got it, has tried it. So if you want to group them, you know, uh, all these deities, they can be grouped under this, uh, you know, the blessed ghost or some of the lowest deities. Yeah. And there are also some other blessed ghosts as well, such as uh, Do Ghost, uh, Do God, uh, Do. Uh, we call it, yeah, Do God. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So they are the divine, you know, guardians of those and gets, you know, in Chinese folk religion. Uh, and it says that, you know, this God you know, will protect against the evil influences or to encourage the entrance of the positive energy. And also you'll find the kitchen gods, right? The Lord of the soil and the ground. And then you also have another one is called the Datok Gong, you see? So these are quite common, uh, uh, the statues, you know, worship in our Chinese Tokong or in the house. <clears throat> so however, no matter how great their blessings are, yeah, they are still ordinary beings and they also have defilements. What we Buddhists can do is to show respect and spread loving kindness to them. Uh, but they should not be the object of our refuge and prayers. So in the suttas, uh, there are often records of uh, non-human beings, Amanusa, which actually refer to gods or Yaksha or Ashura, that they can be attached to the human bodies. In modern times, we often hear of people being possessed by gods. And ghosts are quite close to human and longing for the human life. So once they have the opportunity to attach themselves to the human body, they were certainly not giving up. So who is liable to be possessed by ghosts? And first of all, we must understand in what circumstances a person is liable to be possessed by ghosts. And since ghosts are sentient beings composed of five subtle aggregates, they are always floating around and, and of course they have, they have psychic power, they know the mind of the people and they can attach their subtle body to physical uh, objects such as trees or tablets, you know, the statues or the doves or the stone tablet, etc. Which of course include humans or animals, whether the object is living or the dead body. And there's a ritual of inviting ghosts to possess one's body. And it is quite common in Chinese and Hindu communities and inviting those non-human beings. Uh, definitely it is not from the higher, higher devas. Yeah? And I think I because I will say that also because the devas, they did not approach the human because of our humans, you know, bad smell. Huh? I mean, for the devas, huh? they don't come to us usually. Usually those who come to us are of a very lower devas or the, the, the gods. <laughs> then, of course, the Chinese, you know, they invite this non-human being, it becomes a very, very, very necessary, especially in the Chinese Tokong, you know, for them, you know, to be possessed by this non-human being and perform some of the blessing, you know, you know, for the protection of the of the false. And when we look at this India, Indian, uh, recently, last week, I think they have the Taipusam ceremony. And this is also one of the very grand celebration. And this is also quite, uh, you know, quite, what do you call, celebrated, quite grandly uh, by Hindus in Malaysia. So if you look at this, uh, the Thai Buddhism, you know, what are the features you can see from the Thai Buddhism? Uh, this is the time for the Hindus, you know, to, to make what they call the atonement or dedication or thanksgiving to their gods. And the most interesting thing is that the believer are loaded with iron, iron rings. Their tongues, you know, are pierced with the silver needles and their cheeks are carried with a huge steel bowl bars and their legs are pierced with numerous fish hook-like metal needles, etc., etc., and with all kinds of self-mutilation. And they pair it from one Hindu temple to another Hindu temple, 
praying and offering sacrifice, thereby you know, expressing their faith in the gods and praying for their blessing. So in the whole process, they don't feel pain and no breathing and leave no scar afterwards. And they regarded this as a manifestation of the God. So the Hindu worship their God, and this is, their fo- this is a form to express their faith, repentance, through self-mortification you know, to the gods. So that their purity, they are talking about the purity, is restored. So this is their belief. And the Chinese also inherited these kinds of belief. <clears throat> and what types of peoples are liable to be possessed of non-human beings, right? And I will list three types of people easily possessed by non-human, and either directly or indirectly. And the first, we call it people of low fortune, yeah? uh, means referring to those whose past unwholesome karmas matured, so that they experience their bad consequences here and now. Yeah? And the second, when a person who has no dharma, and who has a lot of anger, right? a lot of defilements, desire, and delusion in his mind. And because of his bad karma in the past that has ripened, yet his mind is not, what they call, you know, prepared, right? It's not properly applied. Um, then again, giving rise to many other unwholesome thoughts. And that bad karmas continue to trigger more bad karmas, right? To this kind of people, we said their karmic frequency is low. Such a vicious karmic circle allowing the non-humans who have a similar karmic frequency associated with him, so that these non-human beings have the opportunity to occupy you know, his body and mind because of the same level of frequency. It's just like you yeah, are tuning you know, the radio frequency so that you got it, right? So this is what we call a person whose karmic frequency is low. And the third, there is also another types of people who are easily possessed by non-human. They often open the door you know, of their heart to non-human beings, such as those medium, and those who claim to be able to communicate with the spirits of the dead, and those who like to, who like to practice some magic power. And so as a result, you know, attracting you know, these non-humans of the low frequency coming to attach to their mouth or make his mind lost consciousness and control their body. So, these are, you know, some of the extraordinary powers possessed by non-human beings. So from the above uh, mentioned different types of goals, you see, and the understanding, you know, so we do not, do not need to worry so much and be scared of ghosts. The Buddha teaches us to practice good, wholesome meditations such as dana, sila, bhavana. In this way, we rest our energy level to the higher level. So if someone is possessed by non-human, such as ghosts, and what we should do is constantly cultivating loving kindness and compassion and share with them, dedicate that to them, let them rejoice in our cultivation. So through the teachings of the karma and cause effect, this teaching reminds us, don't do bad, cultivate good, have the virtues of fears and shame in our conducts. And of course, be mindful of our body, speech and mind. And of course, observe discipline, yeah, sila, and participating in good deeds and accumulate wholesome merits and share dedicated with them. And you may say, I'm doing bad thing in this life, you know. <clears throat> so, but there is a cause and effect, right? So you are paid for your past action, okay? Mm. Um, now we look at this Ulambana, huh? because this is also very important festival in the year that, uh, you know, Chinese will, you know, celebrate this, yeah? And of course, when we talk about the super Chinese superstitious belief, you know, we cannot talk without the man of Olambana, right? Or the man of ghost in Chinese, you call Hui Ye. <laughs> so this is a man that my, many Chinese peoples are really worried about. So in order to calm down the worried mind, you know, Buddhism, Confucianism, 
sectarism and the false belief. We organize various rites and rituals, you know, sort of like transcending the ancestors, you know, the soul, you know, through uh, organizing, you know, various ceremonies like water lane, a Dharma assemblies, or, you know, Ulambana festivals, or filial piety festival, or setting up the food sacrifice to the gods, lighting up the lights and other joyful festival. However, in Theravada practice, there is no such kind of God's festival and they do not need to worry so much. So we don't celebrate the God's festival. So many Chinese yeah, believe that the first day of the seventh month of the lunar Chinese calendar is the day the hell gate is open. Right? And the ghosts are permitted to roam about the human world in search of food. And the ghosts roaming around the living people during the month-long celebration. And they roam around in search of food and help. So during this one month long periods, you know, people will do offering, yeah, sacrifice, or a bit or small, offering food or the burning, you know, incense, you know, the burning, the paper money, clothing, you know, to their departed ancestors and lonely spirits and the wild ghosts because they believed the ancestors will return after taking the offering by giving blessing to the family, giving them safety and giving more business. Uh, they hope, uh, giving more business or ma more money to them. So this is what the Chinese believe. Uh. So in the Theravada, there is no such belief that the gods come up in the seventh month of the lunar calendar. And it was a superstitious belief handed down by our Chinese ancestors. And what is true in Buddhism is that the gate of heaven and hell is always open. Instead, the ghosts are everywhere and around us. Huh? And their numbers are more than, huh? far more than, you know, the human beings. So when you do good karma, you are going to heaven. If you do bad karma, you are going to hell. So there is no gate. So there is nobody who is watching the gate either because there is no need to. The law of karma is automatic and you cannot escape or run away from the law of karma. So if you're worried, um, <clears throat> you are not following, you are not doing like in our Chinese Ulambana festival, uh, if you are not following what your ancestors doing, right? you are not following them uh, as a Buddhist, you know, what you can do, you can practice Adana, Sila and Bhavana and dedicate merit with them. So this is much more mandatory than just only giving food, things like that. Now, we will look at one of the suttas, you know, someone may ask, I do Dana very often and dedicate merit to my ancestors or departed relative. Don't they receive it long ago and reborn in the better realms of existence? Do they still need my dedication of merit? Who will be able to receive my dedication of merit? I think in, one, in this sutta, Janu Soni Sutta of Angotara Nikaya, the answer is very clear. Here, in this sutta, three points are clearly mentioned. It says that as we were wandered, round and round in the samsara from the beginningless time. It is not difficult to find our relative who have reincarnated in the realms of hungry ghosts. So this is one point. Then the second point, the Buddha said, only hungry ghosts are benefited from merit shared by his friends and relatives. Being from other realms will not be Benefited. So this is the second point. And the third point is, if his departed relatives are not born in the realms of hungry ghosts, his many other departed relatives born in the realm of hungry ghosts are also benefited. So it is not difficult to find our departed relative who has reincarnated in the realms of hungry ghosts. So there is a reason for us to keep doing merit, keep dedicating merit to all of our ancestors, okay? And why we celebrate Ulambana, yeah? So no matter what anger we use to explore the meaning and origin of the God's festival, and regardless of whether the Ulambana Sutta is a, is a Buddhist or not, 
You see, this festival is significant, serving two purposes in our Chinese culture, right? The first is to promote filial piety of remembering our ancestors. And the second is to promote the righteous deeds and be kind and generous and reminding us to do good deeds. So this is from the perspective of the cultivation of compassion. And compassion must be guided by wisdom so that it will not be evolved into many superstitious beliefs or customs that are of no benefit to humans and gods. So Olambana is definitely not the gods festival. And Theravada Chinese also celebrate Olambana, but mindful, be careful, yeah? <laughs> but not to feed the food to the ghost, but through the act of giving through the act of generosity, the cultivation of loving kindness and compassion, we dedicate the merit to the departed ones, right? So, so this, is, this, is to, this, is, this is an act of filial piety and the remembrance of our ancestors and to promote the good deeds you know, within oneself and dedicating the merits with our, with our ancestors wherever they are, right? So you don't need to worry uh, where they were reborn, you see, because when the marriage shared with them, also that could be of our, our past past ancestors as well. <clears throat> it is easy to fall down to evil plans of existence. And this one is from the Anguttara Nikaya. And the Buddha says, it is very easy to fall down to evil plans of existence, just as water, you know, flow naturally, you know, from the high place to a low place. So this is what we call the inclination of the mind. You know, our, you know we tend to do bad easily, you see. So a person who wish to re rebirth or reborn, you know, to the good plans of existence must be supported, you know, with a good karma. However, if a person uh, uh, wish to be reborn in bad plans of existence, you do not require any effort. So if a person have a view that, you know, to become ghost after that, or insist that people must enter, you know, what we call the intermediate being first after that, which is similar to the concept of the ghost, right? Then surely they will reborn in the ghost realms after death, right? So this is very important to have the right view is very important, you know, in our practice. And in the Anguttara Nikaya, right, the Buddha says, after death, right, people who reborn in evil plans of existence are definitely more than those who reborn in good plans of existence. And many Chinese have had a very common belief, you know, since ancient time, things that people will die and surely become ghosts. And this kind of wrong view, has made many Chinese really pitiful, right? Reincarnated as ghosts after death. Um, okay, now we look at the Ita Suttas for Anguttara Nikaya. You know, Chinese religious belief, you know, consists of the pantheons of deities, you know, many deities. These Chinese deities are created, I don't know, <laughs> or given they are significant, in order to fulfill our Chinese secular interests. And what are Chinese pray for? You know, they are none other than, you know, this five in the suttas mentioned. One is a long life, beauty, happiness, fame, and heaven. Okay, this five. Long life, beauty, happiness, fame, and heaven. Of course, Chinese will not satisfy this five. They will add another one more. You know, that is praying for more money. Huh? Money, money is very important. So in Anguttara Nikaya, these suttas, right, mention these five dharmas are wished for, you know, through worshipping these blessed gods and deities, right? So then if you can get, you know, this five thing, you know, just by begging, wishing, you know, praying and thinking, then I tell you, no one will have lack of this blessing, right? So, if you want to get these five dharmas, you know, not just by praying, you must put your effort 
by practicing generosity, you know, morality, or you know, cultivation of mind, you know, dana, sila, and bhavana, not through praying, wishing, etc. Yeah. And of course, Chinese are very good at giving, right? They are very good, you know, they, they, they support, they sponsors, you know, in return, they ask for this blessing, you know, plus money, right? But they don't seem to understand the practice of morality and the cultivation of the mind. That is the second and the third in Buddhism. So, because Chinese, what they believe is that they want to live an eternal life, you know, continuing enjoying life in life after death. So our, tra our traditional Chinese belief is a belief of praying and praying and praying, right? Keep praying, pray for wealth, pray for success, pray for longevity, pray for reborn in heaven after death. This is why, you know, Chinese got so many deities, each serving different roles that fulfill the needs of an individual. <laughs> the Buddha says, if any wish can be realized through prayers, then there will not be so many people suffer in the world. So when the Chinese pray for deities, they will bring food as well. The celestial being will not take our worldly food. I remember celestial being the God will not take our worldly food. For them, their food in the celestial world is far more superior, far more subtle and far more delicate than the food in the human world. So the celestial gods will not touch the food offered by us, right, by human in the world. More so the celestial beings in the realms of the root, in the form, right? Rupa Dhatu, they, they don't even bother the food, right? They don't eat instead. Right? Similarly, there is no need for human to perform any forms of any kind of entertainment. Right? Celestial beings are living in the sphere of form, right? Rupa Dhatu, they just abide by jhana, right? Abide by the bliss of the absorption, yeah, by the meditation, the, the, the joys that derive through meditation. They, they abide by those joys, right? So if that is the case, uh, when we offer food, uh, then who is eating that food offered by us? Definitely. They are the blessed ghost mentioned earlier, right? Why gods come down in the midnight, right? So this is a question asked. Why not they come, you know, any time, right? And Chinese generally believe by offering food, you know, to the gods, the god will bless us. Definitely, it is not true that the god will bless us in this way, right? So first of all, uh, I would say that if we Chinese offer the food to the blessed god, who are these blessed god? Who are these? Who who are these god? They are the god belonging of the earth, earth god. All right, or uh, they are belonging to the lower lower god. And when you talk about the earth earth god, they are the god of Chatu Maharajika, right? Say uh, Tin Wong Ha. You know, the four great king, right? They, they, this is the lowest, you know, the, the, the god. And of course, under this four great king, Chatu Maharajika Devas, they include the Yaka, Gandabas, or Nagas, you know who guards, you know, the four quarters of the earth, and they are the Dharma protectors, they are the protectors, right? Then there is another earth god also living in the, you know, a uh, god higher than the Chattu Maharajika, that is the Tawa Timsa Devas, and who live on the peak of the Sumeru, you know, the Mount Sumeru. And it says that the Deva King is a Saka Deva. Huh? Uh, so, uh, Tigong, huh? Tigong. Uh, is it Tigong? In okay. Then another thing is, you know, the God, we have, like I said, the God will not eat our food because for them, our human world is very smelly, right? For them. <laughs> That's why in the Sutta it says that the God usually come down to see the Buddhas in the midnight because during the time, during that time, there are less people and the smell is not too strong, right? And the God always like to listen to the Buddha's word in a standing posture. So why? Um, yeah, because they hope to leave the world as soon as possible after listening to the Dhammas. Yeah, I find it interesting. So after, after understanding all this, we know that in fact, the spirits, whatever it is, or non-human being, invited by the people, you know, to take possession of them are not God. They are just yaksha, you know, the earth, you know, lower God, or more the blessed gods, right? Inhibiting 
you know, in our surrounding. And the God doesn't come near to human because human bodies are really smelling like, you know. So Buddhists don't pray for the God. Instead, we invite them to listen to the teachings and become the protector of the Dhamma. So it is interesting to note another very important word that is in Chinese, we say jie xiang, ha, jie xiang. Jie means the precept, xiang means the fragrant, right? The precept fragrant, huh? to cover the smell of the body, right? You use the ordinary uh, fragrant, we'll not, we'll, we'll not do it. It is only true the precepts, right? So the God will come to us because of the precepts fragrant. And of course, it is quite clear, those who observe the sila, you know, will be protected by the God, in a way, right? And if we look at this Dhammapada, 206, it is recorded that the Buddha was critically ill um, before his death and suffered from the dysentery, right? Stomach, stomach diarrhea. The Sakadeva, right, who is the king of the Tawatimsa, you know, took care of the Buddha and brushed the sole of the Buddha's feet with both palms, then the Buddha told the, told the Sakadeva, they said, For heaven, the smell of human is as smelly as rotten meat. Live here now. I have many bhikkhus to take care of me. Then the Sakadeva replied to the Buddha, Oh, blessed one, I still can smell your aromatic fragrance, saying outside of 84,000 miles away. Therefore, I come to take care of you. Although the gods regard the word, as a cesspool, right, and avoids approaching human. However, it is because the virtue fragrant, the precepts fragrant, cover, you know, the audio, the bad audios, you know, of the human body. So the gods are willing to get close to us and guard the good people who have observed the good morality. So once you know these facts, you don't have to rely on any prayers or wear amulets. Right, etc., etc. The morality itself has the mighty power. Right? So the protected gods always love to guard the good people, you know, those who observe you know, the precept. And the good people who lead a holy life not only bring themselves present happiness and true future happiness, but also guarding the benefits and happiness of the world. They are called the messengers of the world messengers of the world because of the existence of these good people the world is still very vibrant and there are gods who are willing to guard the world <clears throat> okay we look at also another suttas is from anguttara nikaya adhamika suttas right and principle so in the present times the world is not peaceful we would say that the world is in, is in crisis and we can deeply felt, right? And we were trapped, you know, in individual house, you know, can I go out? It means that the world is no more safe for us. And many countries, you know, started to have an awareness, you know, to protect the environment, to protect the earth and so forth. But we don't hear that they talk about the fundamental problems, you see, the root problems, you know, in order to solve the crisis. And of course, from the Buddhist perspective, you know, the fundamental problem, the root problem is that people is very unethical, right? It means that the people has no morality and they kill each other, <clears throat> they cheat each other, and they have no respect to parents and elders and teachers and disrespect, you know, to the Buddha Dharma and Zangas and, you know, and you know sexually misconduct abortion etc and many many others you know misconducts wrong behavior so people's morality is deteriorating day by day and eventually this is what we experience now the world is sick now so the global pandemic right that we face now is just a starting symptoms of the world disappear <clears throat> uh, sorry um what we experience now in the world, right, the, the global pandemic is just the beginning of all the problems, right? So as a result, what the, what the, what the outcome causes, you know, short-lived, 
ugly, weak, and sick. So this is the result. So the sutta says at this time, you know, fewer and fewer people, you know, less and less people will be reincarnated in the heaven. And more and more people will be reborn in the Ashuras, right? Ghosts, beasts, and the hell. And the God will no longer be willing to guard the world. So people in the future will have to face many more disasters, such as droughts, right? Famines or more pandemics, right? And wars, you know? So at that time, Yaksha will be, it says that at that time, Yaksha will be rampant, you know, eating people. So this is what you find in these suttas, Adamika suttas. So it can be seen that the people's behavior right, is closely related, you know, the performance, you know, the action of the people's behavior also can affect the world we lived, right, the climate. So we can, you know, predict from the change of climate, right, to see how the world. So we are not far from this situation, right? More and more people in this world are greedy and stingy. You know, they don't observe the good precepts. You know, they do a lot of bad, evil, you know, and they are no more respect to the elders and, you see, uh, teachers, etc., etc. And more importantly, you know, they have a wrong view. This is also another problem, right? So this is the reason why I think sometimes we need to uh you know have this subject on this matter like superstitious belief so that we can clear our wrong view and can have a better understandings and right view you know in our practice of the spiritual path and there is also another one you talk about the various gods you see this this one and in Theravada's right tradition right usually before we start any blessing we will chant this verse, right? Like Bhumma Chayanto Deva, Jala Thala Visame Yaka Gandabha Naga, Titanta Santike Yang Muni Varvachanang Sadhavo Me Sunantu. What is the meaning? It says that in the earth devas, spirits like Yaka, heavenly minstrels, this is, uh, we call it the Gandabha, and Nagas, right? Okay, comma, in water, on land, in bad land, nearby, okay, nearby these places, may they come with approval. So this is a sutta says, who are, these, who are these people? They are the lower gods, you know, and they are lower gods, they are living nearby here. Uh, they are living nearby here. So as I recite the word of the excellent sage. So it's quite clear. You see, in Buddhism, you know, so these, are, these are the deities, these are the guardian Dharma protectors. They live in the lower, 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 lower heaven, right? Or they are the earth god. And we invite them, you know, through our precept fragrant, right? <laughs> to listen to the Buddha's teaching. And in return, we hope they can protect the world, you know, free from the calamities. So in this uh, particular recitation, there are four classification, right? Four types of non-human being and the places where they live. It's quite clear here. It says that these four classes of non-human being, they are the earth devas, right? Earth devas. And they are the yakka, the spirits. And they are the, you know, the heavenly, what do you call it? The minst minstrels, all right? Or gandabha. And they're also Nagas, right? And they are the worldly spirits. They are the worldly devas, the earth devas, right? Or sometimes we call them, they are the guardians of Buddhism. And where, are, where, where do they live? Right? They live nearby the water, nearby the land, or nearby the bad land, right? <clears throat> so anyway, I want to make a little remark right, just now, because when we talk about the word Deva, right, or we used to hear the word Devas, I mentioned very often here and there in the suttas. Anyway, I want to uh, clarify, you know, the terms Devas. 
as to the devas, there are two types of devas, right? One is the higher devas, one is the lower devas, right? And the lower devas, we call they are the earth devas. They are inhabiting, you know, in, in, the, in the earth, right? And, and, you know, they live on different parts of the mountain at the center of the world, which is the Sumeru, huh? Sumisana, like what we call is in, in, the, in the mountain of Himalaya, right? Sumeru. And there are also, there are the Tawa Timsa Devas, right? Who live on the peak of the Sumeru, it means on the peak of the Himalaya. And the, the king is the Sakadeva. And then another much another one is lower than the Tawa Timsa, is the Chatu Maharajika Devas. And they guard the four quarters of the earth. And then some other types of, uh, we call it the spirits or the, the, the god, uh, the lower god. Uh, there could be the Gandaba, there could be Naga, there could be Yaka, right? And they're also considered as the earth devas, right? So these lower devas, they don't really bother the food, right? Because their food uh, is much delicate than us in the world. So it is quite clear that those who search for food, um, you know, the non-human human being who search for food, definitely they are belonging to the ghost, right? And particularly the blessed ghost. Uh, this one time, and they are able to eat the food offered by the human beings. And of course, Theravada Buddhists never pray for them for the worldly gains. They are also like an ordinary beings, you know, they have anger, you know, they have difficulties. So what we do is to rejoice the merit with them and radiate loving kindness and compassion with them. So last one. <clears throat> and when you talk about the sharing of marriage, you know, there is this form of sharing you know, in a Theravada way, you know, with the guardian deities, right? Like Akasatacha Bumata Deva Naga Mahidika Punyantang Anumoditwa Chira Rakantu Buddha Sasana Desanang Pang Mang Parangti Etavatacha Amhehi Sambadang Punya Sambada. Sabe Deva, Sabe Buddha, Sabe Satta, Anumodantu, Sapa Sampati Siddhiya. Yeah, it says that may beings inhabiting space and earth, Devas and Nagas of mighty power, share these merits of ours. May they long protect the dispensation of the Buddhas, the teachings of the Dhammas, me and others. And may all deities, creatures and beings rejoice in this merit which we have thus acquired. May all prosperity be theirs. Okay, so this is a format of sharing, very common uh, sharing with the guardian deities. So this sharing of marriage also has a story, right? Once, um, after emperor, you know, Sakadeva asked the Buddhas, the Buddhas uh, called the monks, okay, called other bhikkhus, you know, to share the marriage with the gods and the sentient being, and because of this of the request of the Sakadeva, then from day on, it has become a custom of the Buddha's disciple to invite all these sentient beings, right, including the gods, yeah, to share with them after making, you know, uh, after doing good merit. Huh? And a person who always practice good deeds and know how to share this marriage with the gods after doing good karma, the god will protect him. Right? and help him and support him with joy. And the places where God often comes to rejoice marriage also are full of like and auspicious sign. And those low-level gods right, who are not good and don't understand rejoicing marriage usually avoid such bright you know, places and don't want to get close to us. So this is the understanding of the guardian Dharma protectors. Okay, so I leave it to our brothers, Bobby, to take the, the mic. Eh? Okay, sorry. Thank you, Bhante, for the uh, wonderful sharing. Stop sharing. Eh? Thank you, Bhante, for the wonderful sharing. I think uh, it's a cl clarified a lot of uh, 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 doubts and also raised a lot of questions. Yeah, yeah, good. <laughs> so uh, to begin with, uh, I'd like to ask a question from Bhante. Wait, wait, encounter non-humans, what should we I do? Want I want to remove How to remove this? Oh, okay, okay, now okay. Okay, okay. Okay, now, sorry. Continue. Bhante, if we encounter non-humans, 
what should we do? <laughs> okay. What should we do? Huh? What should we do? Uh, Bobby? <laughs> Uh, it's, it's very interesting, uh, very interesting, <clears throat> okay. And of course, when you talk about this thing, there are so many answers to this, right? So many answers. And of course, uh, uh, like just now, I, I have mentioned that uh, if we encounter non-human beings, you know, we can radiate the loving kindness, all right? And make that as a cultivation, you know, in our day-to-day -day practice, right? And of course, um, besides, I think, uh, we also observe the good morality, right? Observe the five precepts or the eight precepts, right? And also, if you encounter any of these non-human beings, I think you can also invite the virtuous monk, you know, to come and do some chanting of protective verses, uh, or, you know, rely on the power of the Mahasangas, you know, reciting in certain suttas. And of course, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, call? Yeah, if a person is possessed, you know, by a non-human being, right? Then just now we said that the spreading of loving kindness, a dedication of merits, you know, they are two very important of effective methods, you know. Also try to communicate with that person, right, who was hinted, right? and asked to repent of his positives and mistakes that has made internationally, intention, intentionally, right, in the past. And, and when we talk about the person who was uh, encountered by the non-human, that is also because due to his past karma, where, you know, his karmic in the frequency is low. And as those of the frequency of the non-human being, that's why, you know, they can be easily attacked. So it's just like what we have, what, what I have earlier said is like, you are tuning, you know, the radio frequency until we can get a signal. So similarly, you know, if our mind is in the low frequency, you know, we, also, we are also easily quite receptive, right, to these types of low frequency of the non-human being. So the best way is to avoid being possessed by this non-human being is to rest, you know, the frequency, you know, how? through the generosity, through the observ 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 observance of precept, and through the cultivation of the loving kindness. It's like raising the frequency to the higher level until the non-human beings can no more attach to the person. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Bhante. Another question, Bhante. When it comes to making merits for ancestors, it is natural to burn paper money Burning paper money for the dead has become a custom unique to Chinese. What is Bante's opinion about this? Mm, making merry for the ancestors. Okay. Um, of course, many people, uh, Chinese folks, they don't know how to share marriage with their ancestors, right? So this is the only choice, you know, for them, you know, to, to burn the paper money, right? <laughs> etc. Right, and so then usually how to do it? So in a, in a Theravada tradition, right, to help a loved one who has died, right, we are expecting them, you know, to be reincarnated in the wholesome, um, in a heavenly realm instead of being reborn as a ghost. And we should remember that doing meditative deeds and sharing merits is beneficial and can bring happiness, right? So sharing merits is, 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 is a very effective way, right? Mm. <clears throat> then, like just now I have said that even if the departed relative born in the hell, right? Or animal life or cannot get married, but there are also many other relatives in the past who were reincarnated in the God's realms will be benefited. So the sharing of merits will never be wasted. So, People do not necessarily become ghosts after that. Lah, huh? So no need to burn, you know, and you don't expect your ancestor to be to be reborn in the hell or reborn as a ghost, right? So and we have faith in the Buddha Dharma. So we expect, you know, we do a lot of marriage and help 
you know, with these merits for their better reborn in the in in the higher realms of existences, and and the more money you know should be used in the meaning way in meaningful places like you know the benefits you know both the dead and the living one, right? So since uh, we are talking about you are you are going to spend the money you know buying this uh, you know this uh, you know the the paper you would be better you spend it more meaningfully by you know the supporting the sangha you know by doing good marriage sharing the marriage okay so that is my opinion thank you thank you bhante uh, another 10 questions bhante i don't think we can answer those things <laughs> okay. uh, brother al chan asked how do we know our deceased close one will be reborn as not as ghosts what degree of karma we don't know uh, i think nobody know uh, sorry, uh, can you repeat again? Born way? How do we know our deceased close ones will be reborn, not as close? What degree of karma we don't know? Uh, okay. Are you are you saying that? Uh, of course, we don't know where our ancestors, where our deceased person go, but I think our Buddhist way will definitely, you know, doing marriage will definitely not be wasted. So. I think we need not to worry so much, you know, where they they reborn. You see, because when you are doing merit for yourself, <clears throat> right? For for others, you are also doing merit for yourself as well, right? So uh, there is no harm, right? Not wasted. Keep doing merit for sure. They will reborn in the better planes of existence. Thank you, Bante. Question from Karen Ong. Bante, uh -huh. when we die, which realm should we aspire or wish to go? <laughs> I think depending on karma, isn't it? Depending on karma, if we have some, we have faith in the Buddha Dharma Sangha, if we are observing the morality precepts and cultivation of mind, you will surely reborn in the higher realms of existence. So that, that is for sure. So you need not to worry so much. Okay, have can have faith in the Buddha Dharma Sangha, or or also you can. It's like something like when you were about to die, you prepare yourself, right, to go to the better plans of existence. Prepare yourself, okay? Don't think of going to the bad plans of existence. And that helps you. Okay, I think if you want to talk about that, I think that will be another big topic on the karma. <laughs> All right. Next question from Jenny Leong. For people who are not so normal, that is mentally challenged, and are possessed by ghosts, what can such people do since they can't help themselves very much? How I think you can others help them? I think Begodo, I think someone who sort of like possess, if he is mentally not fixed, I think better to see the mental doctors, ne? Better. No? <laughs> okay. So yeah. Next question from Denning Wilberforce. In Thailand, many people wear Buddhist amulets for protection, wealth, etc. They mm -hmm. believe that these amulets are effective. Would appreciate very much for comments on this matter. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. I think just I have mentioned, you see, the most effective, definitely, uh, not from this amulet, you know, but it's from the observation of your morality, your, your doing of done and your cultivation of mind. These are much more effective than wearing the amulet, right? And of course, this amulet practice is practiced among the Thai Buddhist community, not by other Sri Lankan or by Burmese, you know, Indian community. So this is a very, you know, localized, you know, types of <clears throat> uh, the practice. So um, <clears throat> if you ask me, is the amulet powerful or not? I think that one is up to individual. But to my understanding, uh, we don't need to get the protection from the amulet, but it's from the <clears throat> Is from the you know the practice is from the precepts that we we observe. Thank you. Next question from William. Ng. How do we differentiate between petas and azuras? Are they from a different realm? You see, of course you have the the, the place called the praetas, okay, under this sixth realm, and you have also have the ashura. You know, uh, in in Theravada, ashura is also one of the is also uh, one of the what they call the woeful state of existence. Of course, there are differences. You see, um, because when you talk about the asuras, you find also asuras in the 
in the in the lower realms in, in the in the in in the in the lower realm and you also find assurance in the higher realms like in the in the in in the in the devas <clears throat> you see so you find you know our buddhist sutta we also find a lot of asuras they are the dharma protectors right they are dharma protectors so <clears throat> like one of the king you know in so this asura can live anywhere because they have no specific place just like uh, you know just like the the ghost they have no specific place so they can move around you know the heaven they can move around the earth uh i think want to know about this yakshas i think that need another huge topic to talk about it together with the gandaba today to, together with the nagas you see because they are a huge topic yeah, for this but i think one thing can tell you there are differences right there are differences and and of course for those yaksha who live in the heaven they are much more what do you call you know the married is much more meritorious right and for those who live in the lower realms you know they don't acquire much merit and yeah i think we, we stop here <clears throat> yeah, but we'll arrange another talk on that topic but uh, okay question from crystal Lai. Bhante, although you mentioned that we need not worry about where our departed has been reborn, mm -hmm. I still want to forward this doubtful question which has persisted in my mind. My mm -hmm. mother passed away at age 100 and she has led a good life with four generations. She has not done anything bad in this lifetime. Does this mean that she will have a good rebirth or will she be blessed with Nibbana? Yeah. Okay, of course, nobody can assure, right? But what we believe is if you do good karma, you will for sure, you know, take rebirth in a good plan of existences. Okay, so uh, no need to worry so much. I think we have so much faith in the Buddha Dharma Sanghas, right? So, um, <clears throat> the rebirth is very much depending, say, like if he has not done any. You know the meritorious action in the past, but in his immediate, what do you call the the the, the dead, proximate death, if he is doing good good deeds, you know, listen to the Buddha's teaching, and have his mind, you know, properly, you know, uh, cultivated in the loving kindness, you know. So with all these good medi with all these good merits, uh, surely will take him to a better existences. Okay, so so need not to worry so much, right? So we have. Uh, faith in the Buddha Dharma Sangha, we can do that. Mm -hmm. Bhante. Next question from Brother Hai Eng. What about guardian angels? Are they earthbound devas, nagas, or yakas that protect us? Do we mm. need to have karmic affinity with them before they can help us? To what extent can they help us from harm? Okay, like I have said towards the end, it's your. It's your precept fragrant. It's your observation of morality. Okay? Because when you observe the good morality, you see, you are emitting, you know, the fragrance of the, 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 the sila. So all these devas, you know, will come and protect you. Okay? So observation of, of sila is very important. Related question from Brother A.L. Chan. How does Gandaba and... What does Gandabas and Nagas do? How is it classified with Yakas? Okay. All these three are harmful to human beings. <laughs> okay. Yeah, these are a very huge topic, but I, I hope I can give that topic in another lesson. But I think uh, one thing is they are not harmful to human beings because they're scared of human beings. Okay. They will run away from human beings because of the foulness of the human beings. <laughs> okay. But Okay, so we, we leave it to another topic. Okay, another 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 lecture. Thank you, Bhante. Question from Felicia Tyre. Bhante, what is a Theravada funeral like? Oh, it's very simple. It's very simple. Of course, uh, like in Sri Lanka, when I was there in Sri Lanka, you see, the funeral is very simple. You see, they will recite like Anicca Vata Sankara. Uh, such a very short verses covered everything because the Theravada way would say is, you know, you die with your karma. You see, you die with your karma accumulated in the past. All right. So realizing the impermanence, okay, of the nature, 
you know, you will attain the state of highest happiness, right? So of course, in the Theravada, we try to do it as simple as possible. But of course, now today, we also invite the Sanghas, you know, to do the blessing, you know, chant, chant of these, you know, the contemplative verses, all right? I think more important is to give their pair, give to their living relative a kind of, um, what do you call, um, what do you call, uh, condolences, right? So that their living relative will feel good, you see, there are Sankhas members to come and care for them. So I think that that's very important, right? Of course, uh, like in Thailand, they, they will chant the, the, you know, this, uh, you know, this, what do you call, Ab Abhidhamma, right? The seventh summary of the Abhidhamma verses, right? Because it says that, you know, the Buddhas, he, he preached, you know, this Abhidhamma in the heaven, right, to his mother. And his mother, after, li after listening to this Abhidhamma, you know, got attained, you know, into the Srotopana, something like that, right? So, and the Theravada tradition also inherited from this, right, to chant this Abhidhamma, so that our, our ancestors, after listening to it, we attain also the similar attainment. So, yeah, so these are, these are, these are the current practices. <clears throat> okay. Thank you, Bhante. Question from Dr. Wu. Dear Bhante, we can get protection from devas. What about getting protection from Buddha to teach the Dharma and more powerful than devas? Sorry, repeat again. We can get protection from deva. How, what about getting protection from Buddha who can who teach the Dhamma and more powerful than them? Oh, of course, of course, if we follow the Buddha's instruction, observing these uh, dana, sila, bhavana, or observing the higher, like a uh, uh, sila samadhi and Panya, you are you are protected. You know, not only protected, you are you are leading straight to the nibbana. Okay, <laughs> yeah. So the best thing is to observe the sila samadhi and Panya for the ultimate realization of nibbana. That is uh, the most secure. Last two questions, dear Bhante, also from Doctor Wu. Request from Sakadeva asking for transferring of merits is in which sutta? Let me check, okay? Let me check, because these are quite common. Let me check for you. For you. Okay, thank you, okay. Bhante. Sister, from question from Sister Bot Lim. Bhante, there was once I attended a week with friends who came together with me in my car, and they requested that they stop by a coffee shop to have a drink first, so that whatever spirits won't follow them home before proceeding back home. Out of compassion and to preserve harmony, I relented, even though I felt that their belief is superstitious. Bante, kindly advise and share your thoughts on one's response if one were to face with above situation again. Thank you, Bante. Mm, it's okay. You can, you can have, you can drink anything. You know, these are, you can go to the tea shop. You can go any other place. Okay. So they are making money only. But to be honest, I, I, I have never heard of this kind of segment before. And of course, uh, Money-minded people will do like that. Okay, you come to my place, you buy the first things, and then, <laughs> and then the the ghosts will follow you. Uh, so I think these are just uh, the the belief, lah. You know, just a belief. So you need not to worry this thing, this much. Okay, no need to worry. One more question from uh, Brother Eddie Cha. Bante, would like to request to transfer marriage today's dharma sharing with Sister. Chiu Siu Eng Cheng from Klang who passed away yesterday morning due to an illness. Okay. Okay, okay. this is the last question and uh, we pass back to Bhante for sharing of merits. Thank you, Bhante, for the questions. Okay. Okay, so you can, let me see, Chiu Siu Cheng. Wait, huh? I don't know how, how to share. <clears throat> Where is it? Share screen. Yeah, I've tried to find my share screen. <laughs> okay. okay, sorry. <clears throat> okay, can you see me? Can you see? Can, can see. Okay, yeah. Okay, so now let us share the merits also. Just now, 
uh, or say you can think of his, you can you recite his name, okay, uh, over there. And then you also can think of uh, sharing these merits to all of our ancestors, right? They can share the merits and rejoice with these merits. And okay. Akasata Chabumata Devanaga Mahidika Punyang Tang Anumoditua Chirang Rang Kanto Buddha Sasanang Chirang Rang Kanto Desanang Chirang Rang Kanto Mang Parangti Eta vata cha ame sampadang punya sampadang sabe deva sabe buddha sabe sata anumodantu sapa sapati sedia. Okay, Patidana, transference marriage to our departed relative. Idang meng ya ti nang ho tu su ki ta on tu ya ta yong. Idang meng ya ti nang ho tu su ki ta on tu ya ta yong. Idang meng ya ti nang ho tu su ki ta on tu ya ta yong. Patana aspiration. Imina punya kamena, mame bala sama gamo, satang sama gamo hotu, yavanik bana patiya. Kayena wacha chitena, pamadena mayakata, Aja yang gama me bande buri panya tata gata kaya na waca cinta na pamade na maya gata aja yang gama me damba sandi tiga agali ka kaya na waca cinta Te na pa ma de na ma ya ka ta A cha yang ka ma me sang ga Supa di pa na ano ta ra Sa du, sa du, sa du, sa du